In this video, I would like to talk about using the 18 to 55 mm kit lens for astrophotography. So this is a lens that comes with a lot of DSLR cameras, and so perhaps you already own that camera. And now there might be the question, can I use that specific lens for deep sky astrophotography? And that's a question I had over the past few years. And finally, I managed to use that lens for deep sky astrophotography. In this video, I would like to share my experience with you. In the beginning of that video, I would like to introduce that lens to you. And after that, I would like to go over to the setup I used to capture that image. And after that, I would like to show you the results I was able, I was able to achieve. And after that, I would like to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of using that specific lens for deep sky astrophotography. And in the end, I would like to give you my final opinion. So if you're interested in that, definitely make sure to watch the entire video. But now, let's get started. First of all, I would like to mention that this video is not sponsored and I'm not being paid for it. Our products shown in this video were purchased by myself. But now I would like to start. So you can already see that lens in here in the background. So this is that lens. So as you, as you can see, um, this is a zoom lens, which means that you can select a focal length between 80 millimeters and 55 millimeters, which is definitely great for a deep, great range for deep sky astrophotography. So when using that lens at 18 millimeters, you will get a very wide field of view of the night sky, which is great for capturing time-lapse videos of the night sky, star trail images, and for sure Milky Way astrophotography. But you can even use a longer focal length up to 55 millimeters, which is great. Uh, for deep sky astrophotography because you can get more details in your final results. But something I'd like to mention is that um, when using that specific lens at a focal length of 80 millimeters, the maximum aperture is f3.5, which is okay for deep sky astrophotography, but when using a longer focal length, so um, 55 millimeters for example, the maximum aperture is in the range of f5.0 or f 5.6, so I'm not 100% sure about that one, but in that range, which means that less light reaches your sensor. So when using that specific lens for deep sky astrophotography, I would rather go for a focal length between 24 millimeters and 35 millimeters, because um, that's definitely a great range and the maximum aperture is okay for deep sky astrophotography, but still less light reaches, reaches your sensor, which is not that good for astrophotography. But now we'd like to go over to um, the setup I used for that night. So this is the setup I used for that night, and so on the top of that telescope there is uh, my lens, which is the Canon 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens, and at the back of that um, lens I've attached my camera, which is the Canon EOS 2000D. So this is an APS-C sensor, which is great uh, for that specific image because uh, those Canon EOS cameras have a crop uh, a crop factor of of 1.6, which means that um, I will get more details in the final results and I mean, that's not that perfect for um, wide field imaging, such as for the Milky Way. Furthermore, we need to we need to track um, our entire setup because of this rotating. And for that, I uh, used uh, the Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro Goji mount. I know that this mount is a bit too big for that setup, but still that's the only mount I have. And I mean, a bigger mount in general means that I can use a long exposure time. Therefore, I was able to use a single exposure time of up to three minutes, which is quite good. Furthermore, I used um, the ASI Air Pro. Uh, so this Astro computer allows me to control the entire setup to control the mount or uh, the camera, so actually the auto guiding system. So in that case, I did not use the auto guiding system, but I can control that with that Astro computer as well. Um, so that allows me to use the exact framing I would like to capture. But now I would like to go over to the image I captured. So as we mentioned, um, a focal length between 24 and 35 is great. So in my case, I used um, a focal length of 35 millimeters, I think. So in that range, um, the, the maximum aperture would be f4, I think, and but I use f5 to get better star quality. So when capturing images of the night sky with lens, definitely do not use the maximum uh, aperture because then your stars will not be that good. When f4.0 is the maximum aperture, rather go for f5.0 uh, because then your images will be a bit sharper and in general it will help you to improve the star quality and in general the, the quality of the entire, uh, entire image. I mean, the disadvantage is that less light reaches your sensor, but um, your image quality will definitely be better. Um, therefore, I used f5.0 to get better stars in my final results. But now I would like to go over to the image I have captured in that night. So here we go. So this is the image I captured in that night. 
Now we'd like to talk about a few uh, settings I used for that image. So that image has a total exposure time of four and a half hours, which is pretty much actually. So I used an ISO value of 800 because at that uh, value, the camera performs the best, will have less noise in my final results. And right now there's summer, which means that the temperatures are quite high, even in the night. And therefore, um, ISO value of 800 is definitely the best value I can choose. Um, furthermore, I used a single exposure time of three minutes. And as you can see, um, the stars are still very, very around here in the center, for example. So definitely tracking and the exposure time was perfect in that night. Now a bit about the star quality in general. So as you can see, the stars are perfect here in the center. But when going into the corners, for example, you can see that the stars are not that round. So they look a bit like comets, but that's not due to the tracking. So we'll have the same when using Tony telescope without a coma corrector for deep sky astrophotography. So we have a lot of coma here in that image. So you can see that those stars are definitely not that good here. So when using those lenses for deep sky astrophotography, when using, for example, when, you, when your maximum aperture is f4.0 and use f5, then usually that will help you to reduce that coma in your final results. But in that case, unfortunately, it did not work as planned. But with a few expensive lenses, and that problem is not that relevant, but with that kit lens, unfortunately, that's still a big problem. So in that night, I even used f6.4, I guess, but then the problem was the same um, as well. So I, I used f5.0 to get a bit more light into my final results, but still, that is definitely a problem. So to get a great image, you definitely need to crop your entire framing to that here, but um, then you will lose a lot of details, so that entire framing here, which is not that great, definitely. So in that case, I used a 4.0, which is definitely not great for a deep sky astrophotography because we'll not get that much details in our final results. So that's four hours of total exposure time, four and a half hours of total exposure time, which is actually very, very much. But um, So that's definitely a problem that the lens has. So when using those very expensive lenses for astrophotography, you can use a maximum aperture of 2.8 or 1.4, and that allows you to gather more light. And um, in that case, with that expensive lens, definitely your image will be better because we gather more light. Furthermore, I'd like to mention that this image was captured with a camera that is not astro modified, which means that those H alpha regions here, um, you, can, you can't see them that great, even with four and a half hours of total exposure time. Now I would like to show you a few objects that are visible in that framing. Um, so here you can see, for example, you can see the North American nebula, but unfortunately you can't see that much detail. So in that nebula, there's a lot of H alpha, but unfortunately my camera is not astro modified, which is definitely a problem. Furthermore, there are a few objects on the image that you can see when zooming in, only when zooming into that image. So for example, if you zoom in a bit more here and go all the way down here, we can see the Veil Nebula here. So you can see here a bit of Nebula, right here, and then here. So definitely, um, and certainly not enough exposure time to real great structures in that object, but still you can see that, which is something I find quite amazing. So as you can see, you can definitely capture images of the night sky with that lens, but definitely you will lose a lot of image quality and Unfortunately, you have to, you can't use the maximum aperture of that lens and you will get a lot of problems with coma when using that lens for astrophotography. So you can definitely use that lens, but I do not recommend so. So if you have that lens and would like to try out, you can definitely capture great images of that lens. So I've been using that lens over the past few years for capturing tileless videos and definitely when, you, when capturing tileless videos or uh, star channels, this lens performs great. But when doing deep sky astrophotography, as you can see, um, that's definitely a limit of that lens. So, um, I mean, that are, these are, that are four hours of total exposure time and still you can't see that much details, which is something I, which is something I do not like about that lens definitely because it's not that good in collecting light of the night sky. So if you're planning to capture wide field images of the night sky, I would rather go for a better lens with a maximum aperture of f2.8 or even faster because that will help you to collect or to gather light even easier and to collect more light in that specific uh, amount of time and that specific period of time. And therefore, um, this is definitely a lens that, that, that you can use as a beginner and you can definitely use that lens to get your first steps into astrophotography. But from planning to do, 
uh, professional astrophotography, that's definitely a lens I would not recommend using for deep sky astrophotography. So to my final conclusion, um, it definitely makes so much fun capturing light sky with that lens because it's not it's not that heavy and you do not need um, that big tracker and you can capture images with that lens. It's not that expensive and still you can get great images of the night sky. So if you have already used that lens for deep sky astrophotography, please feel free to share your experience down below in the comments. I'm definitely interested in that on your experience when using that specific lens for deep sky astrophotography. And so that's um, everything I'd like to mention about that lens. You can definitely use that for astrophotography, but as you can see, the results are not that amazing, definitely not. So yeah, if that guide or this video in general was helpful for you, I would really, really appreciate a like and a subscription. Otherwise, thank you so, so much for watching and until next time. Clear skies, Felix.